what's going on guys Trey Knight here back at it again with another Destiny 2 video guys um, it's been not even a week or so I said I was going to start getting back to it um, there hasn't been too much to post I'm trying to basically come up with some series to get something started um, and get more videos flowing out there guys but it is very dry as you um, probably know but this I logged on to Destiny today, um, Tuesday, February 20th, 2018, and it gave me an idea. This popped up on the screen. I thought, why not start a video um, about this? So, guys, basically, if you are unaware of what the Faction Rally is, you probably haven't played Destiny 2 ever, or at least in a very long time. Um, and basically what it is, is um, if you're new to Destiny altogether, we'll start from there. Back in Destiny 1, there were three different factions. Um, they were basically like clans or per se or like teams that you could join and they represented um, you know, different things throughout the story throughout the game. But basically the three were from left to right here. Dead Orbit, New Monarchy, and Future War Cult. They all symbolized, like I said, different things throughout the story. But really what gave players an incentive to pick between the three were basically their different shaders, their armor, and their weapons. Um, I, you know, have spent time throughout Destiny 1 with all three. There were, you know, very infamous weapons with all three, um, including one of the most infamous weapons, the Wormwood sidearm that, that lived strongly in the beginning of year three, and that came from the future War Cult. Uh, so a lot of people were pledging there. Uh, but there were plenty of weapons that, that, you know, held capable in the Crucible and as well as PvE from these three factions, um, you know, just like you would get very infamous weapons from the Vanguard packages as well as your crucible packages anyways guys without further ado we're going to go ahead and dive into what destiny 2 has to offer for the factions and that is rallies basically what faction rallies are is basically where you pledge to a faction and whichever of the three factions has the most players pledged they win and they will basically have their success and their their victory um you know shown throughout the tower with banners and different you know visuals and stuff but um Basically, if you pledge to that faction, then you get their featured weapon for free, I believe, or a very, very, very cheap price. And you can still buy the weapon if you pledge one of the other two factions. However, you're going to have to pay like 50,000 Glimmer for it. So, you know, it's like half your chunk of Glimmer if you've maxed out. So a lot of players are like, oh, you know, it's just a cool little incentive to try to, you know, be loyal to your faction, but pick the one that you think, you know, everyone might else, or everyone else might pick if you want that weapon. You know, I, I haven't really, you know gone into that i'm kind of a visual uh you know geek so i really kind of pledged whichever one has the best shaders which have i first pledged uh new monarchy because they had really cool shaders but then immediately went to dead orbit for the next one um just because i really want that super black type shader that destiny one had that i choked and didn't get during the halloween um update and you know series back in d1 um so i definitely want to try to get uh, really cool shaders, but I am also going to stay on the lookout for really cool armor as well as some weapons. So I'm going to keep all three in consideration um, as I choose this time. And I'm here with Merciful um, Demise, and she's my girlfriend and going to be featured a lot more on this channel, hopefully, guys, um, as we feature Destiny 1, Destiny 2, and maybe some other games to come. Uh, so anyways, guys, without further ado, let's head into the tower and get this thing started. So basically, guys, I mean, D2 has been going pretty solid. We just got done with Crimson Days. I choked and didn't make a video like I was planning on doing. I wanted to save up a bunch of Crimson Ingrams and drop a Crimson Ingram opening video. But um, by the time that I came up with that idea, I had already opened an ungodly amount of packages um, as I played like 150 games of the doubles playlist. And, um, you know, by that time, I pretty much had everything there was to get. So it wasn't really as exciting and it would have been very staged. And I just didn't want to drop a video, um, you know, for views like that or anything. You know, not that I get that many views. But as always, guys, please like, share, and subscribe. That will help a lot with that. So anyways, guys, we're going to log in uh, or what? fly into the tower and check out these factions. We're going to go to each of the three. We're going to place our opinions on them. And then, you know, in conclusion, we're going to make a decision on which one we're going to go with. Tiff might go with a different one than I go with, and that's okay. But uh, we're going to go ahead and check them out together one by one. Um, so, yep, hope you enjoy, guys, and thank you for watching. Hopefully it doesn't take, like, six years to fly into the tower because that would be really boring. I'll check out and show you what I'm rocking these days. Uh, I run different armor sets and stuff. I'm currently not on Goldie as Tether was extremely useful in dubs because of everyone basically just using um, tracking grenades and running, you know, stuff like 
basically arc strider with skip grenades and shinobu's vow for four a total of four skip grenades coming at you and they actually hurt they did very good damage um so you know that was the reason why i decided to go night stalker because i could get away from that track uh, the tracking of the nades so yeah anyways guys we flew into the tower um and so what do you want to start with tiff all right let's go left let's go to um two of the three are over here so we might as well go to these three or these two and then we'll hit um the last one over on the other side to wrap it up. All right, so we'll just hit this first one. We'll go right up here to the stairs. Here we go. So this is like the little future work cult room. It's kind of cool. And um, let's go ahead and check out what they got. All right. Hopefully not too much of the same stuff, but I I didn't pledge. Um, Future work hold at all, so I'm not completely sure. All right, so we have um, obviously we don't want to hit that unless we decide to pledge um, future work hold for sure. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the um, future work hold Ingram opening. Uh, we'll press triangle on it, and that'll allow us to see what we would look like if we were decked out in complete future work hold gear. It's um it's not too bad. I mean, you kind of look like an astronaut or something like a spacesuit, but that's kind of what it's supposed to be um, themed around. We can also see things individually, such as like the vehicle. Probably just a yeah, it's a very basic sparrow with um, Future War Cult's logo. I'm not really interested in stuff like that. Um, I'll take a quick peek at some of the weapons. Um, a sidearm in the kinetic spot. You know, I'm I'm not really interested in using sidearms as I'm pretty sold on my uh, Better Devils Uriel's loadout currently. Um, this fusion rifle could be good. So what I will do is I will trade over to my uh, fusion rifle that I use very religiously when I choose to use fusion rifles and I compare them So basically it's going to charge a lot lot quicker, but it has absolutely no comparison to range and impact um, That's not the type of fusion rifle. I enjoy I enjoy high impact high range fusion rifles um, I will create the the few or the charge time based on you know my you know Intelligence of the game and you know not peaking too soon um, and I just don't want to change it up to a completely different archetype of fusion rifle. It's not interested in that. Auto rifle is in the kinetic spot. Definitely probably not better, better than Uriel's as the impact is like really, you know, low. The, the, the rounds per minute are actually probably comparable. See. Yeah, it's a faster auto rifle with less impact. Yeah, it could be good, but not probably, you know, going to be better than Uriel's, so we're not even going to consider it. Uh, I have the Foresight Sniper Rifle. Could be an uh, interesting sniper rifle, but snipers don't really have a place in this meta, and I don't like the way it looks. So we're going to pass on that as well. And then lastly, one more kinetic sidearm. Not too interested in that. Um, overall, looking at the armor, like I said, it kind you kind of look like an astronaut, but it, you know it's decent. I would scale it probably on a, a scale from 1 to 5, a 2, maybe a 3, um, depending, and you know, obviously... You, you would have shaders that could, you know, do different stuff with that. But the shaders, I go and take a peek at the shaders. Um, overall, that one actually kind of looks a little cool um, with what I'm wearing. All of the shaders are going to basically be, like, the, the theme of, like, blue, red, and yellow. Um, with some white in there. That one's actually kind of gives off, like, a bluish-purple look um, with what I'm wearing. And then this one should definitely give off that. Uh, oh, and that one's kind of cool. I mean... It's like a white with like a light purplish blue. But okay, guys. Um, Tiff, what did you think about that? Is there anything that stood out to you that you liked a lot or anything? You like the last shader, the white one, the blue? That's pretty cool. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about the dream now? Because obviously, with the winner getting the featured or the featured weapon, this is the featured weapon. If you choose not to go for future war cult, you, well, for PVE they could be good, but I even use my setup currently in PVE because the Better Devils has um you know, actually pretty good effect in PvE. Um, I could pair it with a, um, a better secondary than, than Uriel's Gift, but um, I use situational secondaries like even Uriel's Gift, but also like Cold Heart and stuff, and I'm not big into PvE, so it's a last consideration. Scout, uh, overall, the, future, or the uh, Scout Rifle does look pretty good, um, but it's not going to um, make it or break it for me. So, okay, guys, so we're going to go ahead and um, move on. Future War Cult was decent. We're going to take a left right here, Tiff. We're going to go under Future War Cult over here to where Dead Orbit hangs out. I was loyal to Dead Orbit twice and um, New Monarchy once, so it would be a change-up if I chose um, Future War Cult. 
But anyways, guys, uh, let's go ahead. We're going to look. Ooh, Tiff, uh, we got the Eternal Slumber is uh, a pulse rifle. It's actually a kinetic pulse rifle, um, and it is the featured weapon for Future War, or for uh, Dead Orbit. Uh, let's see if it's got a better sh Ooh. Basically, all the scopes do is increase range, but decrease handling. So for PV, uh, P purposes, you probably just want to either stay the same, or you could, um, you could, I mean, you could change up the perks, but overall, decent weapon. I think that the Trials Pulse Rifle, though, the, the new one is the best currently until uh, Sandbox Update. Um, let's go ahead and go over here to the cube, press triangle, um, or if you're an Xbox player, Y, um, and that will change it. Okay, the armor, uh, honestly, Dead Orbit armor has never really been something very popular, um, and it's never been something that I have really enjoyed. Um, I always feel like the... Um, the helmets make you look like you're, you know, wearing a gas mask. Um, it's not the worst, but at the same time, it's just not as cool as I, you know, would have hoped. Um, basically, I mean, we got a submachine gun here in the kinetic spot. Let's see how it compares to the Uriel or uh, to the Antiope, real quick. Don't think it's going to compare very well. Oh, it's a 900 RPM. Um, which is not bad, but you're not going to have any range whatsoever, so you're literally going to have to be face-to-face -to, -face to be using that. Um, it's got the contingency plan, which um, I heard was decent, um, but like I said, I'm not really interested in the scouts for the purpose of picking. I'm not going to pick based on a scout. Um, auto rifle is pretty much the same. Uriel's, I mean, look at that. It's a 720 RPM auto rifle. I don't need faster. I need you know to hit harder. Um, and grenade launcher, I have colony. Say no more. And then a sidearm in the kinetic slot. Again, not interested. So anyways, guys, that is the um, the new or the dead orbit. Um, basically, you know, I've already had dead orbit's fate, as well as uh, dead orbit's dead orbit's camo before. Dead orbit's fate looks so sleek, nice. You know, primarily black with a shade shades of white here and there. Um, design looks very very good. Uh, dead orbit's camo does give off a little bit of a camo look, um, as you'll see here on the armor set. And uh, it's still not bad, not bad at all on the stompies. Um, it doesn't give off any camo except a little bit on the trim of the legs. And then the newest one, guys, that they didn't have at the time that I was actually pledging to Dead Orbit, they brought a third shader out. This one's called Dead Orbit Resurrection. Resurrection, I, I believe, okay, it's got like a little bit of like a, a, you know, war paint type theme to it. Like it's like you've been through battle. It looks like it's not as sleek. That one actually isn't. Actually, as nice as Dead Orbit's fate, in my opinion, but it's still not bad at all. Um, so I'm actually feeling right now, guys, Dead Orbit over Future War Cult. I assumed I would, but um, that's what I'm feeling so far. Tiff, what do you think about Dead Orbit? Shotgun? Did I even see a shotgun? Are you prepared? Did I miss this? Welcome back. Where's the shotgun? Yeah, you might have been thinking about the grenade launcher. Oh, okay. I was about to say shotgun, I'll definitely check that out. So you're basically feeling future work halt um oh, over dead orbit right now? Oh, you're still gonna go dead orbit? Maybe Tiff's keeping all her cards in uh in her hand right now, she's gonna go for new monarchy. We'll see. I think she'll really enjoy New Monarchy, um, the design of it, but she could just not be into any of the factions, and that's okay. She should pledge one just for the rewards and stuff, um, but she'll... Um... Oh, yeah. They, they, they don't need any bit of... Uh, they don't need any bit of... Um, space over there. I mean, you remember in D1 Tower, they were just like kind of off there and then Future War Cult had that nice little HUD above. Like, they, they do it big. Dead Orbit's just like, yeah, we carry the nicer goods. My opinion, at least. Um, and then last but not least, guys, sorry for the length on this video. It is going to be probably close to a 15 to 20 minute video, guys, but um, we went really in depth with this. Um, if you're still watching, I do appreciate it, guys, um, as I do need some of my view time higher up to get that uh, partnership with YouTube and start making a few dollars off these videos. It would really help increase the quality of my stream as well as my setup and my uh, content on here on YouTube as well if you tune in more on YouTube than you do on Twitch. Um, 
anyways, guys, so let's go ahead and check out New Monarchy now that we've made it over. All right. Now, based off the, like, as soon as you load in, Im immediately, this is, like, extremely difficult not to pick New Monarchy. Because when I left New Monarchy, or when I left Destiny 2 for a while, I, I took a, a brief uh, absence for Destiny 2 for probably as much as, like, a month and a half, two months. And when I came back, I saw people literally decked out just like what my hunter is decked out in over here. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is that? So anyways, guys, there's the New Monarchy Diamonds, the New Monarchy Regalia, and then there's a new one called the New Monarchy Success Succession. Um, and basically, guys, um, those are the three shaders, but that's not quite... Oh my god, that's nice. That is so nice. Guys, I did not think the decision was going to be this hard. Another one's gonna add a little more black to it. That one, the red doesn't pop as much as it does with the succession. Diamonds. Let's see how that one looks. That one's pretty nice. The red is a lot darker. The gold and the red shine really bright on that. But I think the succession, the new new monarch succession, succession. Um, the red doesn't. It's more like a candy red, um, or like a glossy paint red. Not not as you know dark but it definitely looks amazing on the cape so i might at least wear it on the uh the cloak cape um the armor stayed the same guys um what what you're seeing though here on the right uh get to in a second and i actually completely whiffed and choked and did not show that on new, on uh, the other two factions so we might head back really quickly just to cap that off if you're still watching uh please stay tuned um, but basically guys, I mean, we got a submachine gun, not interested, restoration, arrest, it's, it's decent, but it's not comparable to the Uriels really as it's a 600 RPM one and I go for 450s. Um, this one's a 360 and it's a kinetic, not interested, a sword, come on now, I have quick fang and I don't want to talk about sword. Um, and then the, I actually, what I've realized is I think this is the same exact sidearm for all three factions. I think that this, uh. Piece by consensus. I think. I mean, that kind of plays in with the name. Um, so maybe it's something that all three of the factions have. That's why it looks a little bit more vanguardish than it does, you know, like red. It's not themed towards the factions. That's a little bit interesting. It's something they've never done. Um, weapons shared by all three factions. But anyways, guys, if we back out of that for a second and we go over here, basically what this is is um, these are ornaments, and you know, ornaments were brought to um, to D2. Uh, recently and what they are is they give you the ability to basically change the appearance of your armor so basically if you load in over here and you check out the cloak the cloak is gonna look like this it may let me change it yep okay so the cloak looks like this very basic put the ornament on it absolutely different and you have to do different things in order to actually unlock the, the um, ornaments for these weapons or for these armor pieces so you, you do want to keep in mind, you know, obviously that, that certain pieces of this armor are going to look different um, once you get those ornaments on there. So you go over here and then boom. Like so, and honestly what you see whenever you queue in, like right here, is actually with all the ornaments on. So actually you did see the ornament pieces, so we won't worry about going back to Dead Orbit and Future War Cult. And as you can see, boom, this is by far the most uh, popular of the three um with both me and tiff's opinions don't you don't you agree tiff yeah so it's it's pretty hard not to choose new monarchy right here i really 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 wish that uh that i could choose dead orbit for the shaders but if i'm going based on armor i'm going based on ornaments and this is a really hard decision here i have guys um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna let tiff make the first decision i have a feeling she's uh, already made her mind up all right, so Tiff's gonna go with New Monarchy. Tiff, go ahead and cue that in. I uh, just approach him and then select the allegiance under the uh, select the allegiance right there. Go down. No, to that. You didn't speak to all the factions. You didn't talk to. You missed one. Or maybe you talked to Zavala because you never done it. Tiff's is gonna be a little bit different, guys, because she's actually um. You know, this is the first time that she's been playing D Destiny 2 while factions were, uh, like, a rally was going on. So I'm going to go ahead and make my decision, guys. Um, really difficult. But 
But I'm going to go with New Monarchy, guys. I'm going to go to New Monarchy just because you can't basically choose just based on a shader. Uh, so I'm definitely going to go with New Monarchy on this. I'm going to get the little uh, emblem for choosing New Monarchy. Um, it's not a bad emblem. looks pretty cool. And it's going to track my packages while I um, collect New Monarchy packages, packages doing different events um, such as PvE and PvP. Um, even as deep as the raid, we got strikes, you know, including both heroic and the nightfall. We got public events, um, different ways to gather uh, tokens. Then you'll use those tokens to rank up. And yeah, pretty much that's it. You collect as many packages. I believe the limit is 25, and after 25 packages, all you'll collect is shaders. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. I still have um, about 30, give or take, shaders um, of the diamonds and the... I choked, I don't Right here. Regalia and diamonds. I still have, yeah, so about 30 and 20. So, give or take. Um, and, yep, yeah, so that's it, guys. That is my decision. I'm going with uh, New Monarchy for the, uh, what is this, like the fifth faction rally, I believe. Um, anyways, guys, uh, Tiff is choosing New Monarchy as well. So, we're going to be representing New Monarchy together. If I can choose um, a second faction on another character, I will definitely use my Warlock to choose. Um, dead orbit, but I do believe that it is locked and you only get to choose one per account Not one per character as you would easily be able to just reap the benefits of all three by choosing three different ones on three different characters So anyways guys, thanks for watching as always. Please like share and subscribe Sorry for the length of this video guys, but I hope you enjoyed it and as always guys have a great day. Peace